one, uh, it says R and G up here, which stands for Rich and Taylor. Uh, although it has the Huber Pot Assembly in here, uh, and, and there it is. And all banjo players sort of trick them out like you know, do their own uh, But this instrument is relatively new. Uh, I would say probably '91. Um, it was a style made by Gibson uh, during the war, uh, or I guess it was pre-war, and. Uh, some other manufacturers started to copy that design. It was made for using uh, uh, calfskin heads, which you had to tighten and loosen according to the weather. Uh, and you could do it pretty easily from the top without taking the resonator off. Uh, in the days of plastic heads, it's pretty unnecessary, but I think they look kind of cool. They're <laughs> also heavy. Yeah. Is that an old banjo you got there, Dave? Of course. <laughs> yeah, you know me, I don't play anything else. Tell us, tell us about it. Really? No. Uh, well, this particular banjo, I found this banjo by accident <coughs> in Monroe, Michigan, 1956. Uh, I took a guitar down from a uh, repair shop that some old fellow there was pretty good at and uh, I have to spot this it's a banjo head over in a chair. Uh, just no head, no neck, yeah, all the parts were in the resonator. I looked over on the shell and I saw this sticker. So it gives some master tone. And I knew it was a flathead by the, the, the ring that was in it. And I proceeded to talk to them and ask them if he would sell it or trade it. And he said, uh, well I'd like to put a head on that stone food with it. I said, well, would you be interested in having a banjo that's got a neck in it and a head that's ready to play? He said, yeah. So we swapped. Mmm, boy. <laughs> yes, he's, bless his soul, he's not living now. But uh, anyway, that's how I acquired this banjo. And uh, I've had it ever since. And it's, it's a 1933 flathead. Uh, I'm not sure what it was. It could have been a platform, could have been a tenor, could have been a original five star. I have no idea because that's how I found it. And this is a Frank Neat neck that's in it. And uh, the rest of it is, uh, of course, some of the hardware on it is, was broke. And uh, I have replaced the tension hook and the flange. Uh, luckily, found the parts years ago because the others is crumbled. And it's, it's kind of like it's a. Uh, what they call a fat rim. It's just a shade bigger rim in it than a standard three or 75. So the flanges and the tension hooks are a little thinner. That's why they pulled up so bad and broke. So, but uh, I, this banjo's on all the Jimmy Martin recordings. It's also all on the old Kentucky Mountain Boys, my band back years ago that I did. And it's on quite a few of the recordings in the New South. But I've had it since 1956. So, it's kind of become part of me. This is a, a pre-war Deering. Uh, this is a Deering. <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> Three, this, is a, this is a Deering uh, Tenbrook Saratoga Star, maybe seven years old, six, seven years old, something like that, with a Silvio Ferretti Scorpion Bridge. <laughs> And that's it. <laughs> How about you, Mike? Yeah. Uh, another old one. Yeah, this is a Style 75. Probably made about 1939 or 40. Uh, just the pot is an original old pot. Flathead pot. Newer neck, Frank Neat neck, uh, like JD's. Frank Neat makes great banjo necks. Anybody needs to have a, a neck made. It does a beautiful Woo! job. And uh, it was probably a plectrum. Not usually a tenor. A lot of times the flatheads tend to be plectrums. But um, it's got a great sound. It's hard to beat that. But there's a lot of new banjos out there now, too. So if you're shopping around for new banjos, there are a lot of great builders. You know, Steve Huber among them. Uh, they're making great tone rings, great parts. And you, know, you can get pretty close to that old sound. Very, very close. That's for sure. So you don't have to spend $80,000, $100,000 for a banjo, necessarily. Unless you want to. <laughs> 